someone's drowning, they don't care who you are. They're going to see you're afloat and they're going to jump onto you and start drowning you. When you're rescuing young kids, time's on your side. They were screaming for help when I was paddling out, so I, you just got to go. You got to go hard. He looked to me, you know, seconds away from dying. I was patrolling the south corner and it was very strong rips that day, I remember, and the girls ran up to me and, and told me that her brother was in trouble. <laughs> Where? Yeah. Kind of just pointed out to the ocean and I couldn't really even see him. Despite the confusion, Yatesy follows the woman. The can is on the way down to help you. Right in the south corner? Yeah, right in the south corner. Lifeguards can see trouble in backpackers' rip, but the situation remains unclear. I went down there with Chapo quickly and when we got there, Yatesy was in. Central, Queen has simply gone into. Actually got out to him quicker than I thought because I was actually at this stage in the rip. A man, the brother of the woman on the beach, clings to a surfboard. He's been rescued by Bondi's resident photographer, Eugene. Well, if Eugene wasn't there, we would have been diving. To, to get him. By the time I got to him, we'd been sucked into this bank and it was sucking up sort of over the top of us and that guy was in big trouble. The man is on the verge of losing consciousness. I picked him up and he was just a dead weight. He was just floppy, his legs weren't doing anything. It will be close to impossible for Yatesy to get a dead weight swimmer to shore in the crashing surf. Someone doesn't look that good, eh, Harry's? This guy could hardly hold on to Eugene's board, let alone get up on the board. Yatesy gets to a sandbank where he can lift the man onto the board. Was that all it was? Him? He's drowning. He looks like he's still drowning. Well, I've got this guy on the board. He's pretty much a dead weight. You know, as far as I. I could have known he might have stopped breathing on the way in. He was that bad. Pradeep is on holiday from Nepal. Barely conscious, he needs immediate medical attention. Come up here. Lifeguard Quinn is a qualified paramedic. You know, I would have been confident with anyone on the sand, but it's just that little bit more when someone like Quinn is there. When you saw his face in the end, he was he looked green. Those eyes. You know, like when you're close to death and your face changes and your eyes change, you know that he was absolutely on his last breath. Did you take on some water just then? <laughs> if his condition deteriorates, then, you know, you'll definitely need a trip to the hospital. I'm just going to put this on you for, for a little bit, get your breath back. Because of the, the colour, the green in his face, you can tell that he's been without oxygen for a little while. So he's got a deficit there, and putting the oxygen on him was just to try and get him breathing properly again and get some uh, circulation back for him. Bit of a tough little episode there. All right, you're in, you're in a lot of trouble there. Local surfers often step in to help lifeguards. Today, Eugene has saved Pradeep's life. When I saw that he was in a real bad way, like his eyes were rolling, he was going under, his head was really low in the water. I could tell he just had no idea how to swim. This is how I start my day every day. I come down the beach and take some photos. It's a great way to start the day too. All the people down here are really positive at that time of day. You know, look at it, it's beautiful, beautiful light. Every morning, Eugene uploads photos to the website Aquabumps for people to get their Bondi fix from anywhere in the world. Bondi's a huge part of my life. I'm a mad surfer, I've spent my life in the ocean. If I'm not down here working, I'm down here with my kids. So I'm literally down here a few times a day. A regular fixture on Bondi, huge can also be another set of eyes for lifeguards on the beach. I guess it's that element of, you just don't know what's gonna happen, so I always come back. He looked to me, you know, seconds away from dying. This 23-year-old guy kissed my mate on the cheek, she's only 15. What did I do wrong? Yeah, I seen uh, two gentlemen running up to the tower, and when people are sprinting to the tower, you know something's a bit iffy. The man, a French tourist, has limited English. 
understand. He said, a little man with little girl, and I still couldn't understand. Then he made a little kiss motion. Oh, a man's tried to kiss a little girl, and he said, yes. It's a matter for police. Police right here. But Bondi's other boys in blue are currently occupied. So we got to find him, locate him, and just keep monitoring on him until police can come down and take him away. Man, just get down there and find the kind of, um, safety as well. One of the victims recalls what happened. This 23-year-old guy, like, he was drunk, came up and, like, kissed my mate on the cheek. She's only 15. And then he followed us into the water. Um, and then, like, when he couldn't get my mate, he came to me and, like, chucked me into the water, um, but didn't get my consent to do that. On the shoreline, lifeguards identify the man. I could smell alcohol on him. I just, I told him just to stay still and stuff, and he got up and ran back in the water. Um, he just had to chase little girl out of the water. All I want to do is just try and hold him until the police arrive, and those young girls will be fine, and they can go carry on with their day. When I got down there and I started speaking to the guy, straight away I could pick up. The guy's straight on the defensive. Then when we started talking, he kind of knew something was up, and that's when he actually stood up towards me. I thought, we're going to fight here in a minute, you know? Harrison attempts to cool things down. That's when you say, look, police are going to come down here and have a chat. If you've done nothing wrong, stay. The cop was there, you know, he goes up to him and said, look, there's accusations that you've been, you know, harassing young girls. And at this stage, he gave the bloke two options. You can come up on your own terms, or if you're going to play up, we're going to have to handcuff you, and we have to take you up that way in front of everyone. And he kept on arcing up. Without a partner, the police officer faces a solo arrest with a man who won't go willingly. And uh, that's where things escalated once again. Police are apparently arresting this guy. And obviously enough's enough. It just happened so quickly. It looks like they've got him hung up behind his back. Well, I think the last time I arrested someone was probably playing cops and robbers in the schoolyard. Are you being serious? Like, if you can't bring this sort of out. Okay, it's fine. Police must investigate the serious allegations. I can't, I can't feel my hand. Sit down, buddy. I don't know, I don't know, I, I don't even know why you guys brought me here. Like, what did I do wrong? Approaching minors and kissing them. Bro, I didn't kiss anyone. And guess what? Let's go, let's go to the, uh, let's go to the court. And I'm charging, I'm charging you and, and I'm charging this guy. Are you drunk? I'm not drunk. Police have got him. It's really quite challenging, actually, to capture these people and get witnesses sometimes. Do you have any evidence against me? Some older girls from the group arrived to make statements. I kept running away from him, but he kept following. And then that's when, like, he threw, us into the, like, threw me in the water and told him, like, not to do it. And then he was like, but I didn't do anything wrong and all this stuff. But, like, he obviously did if he, like, touched us. That's just not on if you don't have, like, the man was charged with indecent assault of a minor. Temperatures are rising down here at the beach and, and also the tempers are rising of, of a few people, so we just try and mediate it all and make sure no one drowns in between. They were screaming for help when I was paddling out, so I, you just got to go. You got to go hard. We were just about to walk out the door and I just spotted these two girls. See these two younger girls just in that little rift there. Yeah, I might just get down just really quickly. Oh, they're so young, they're so helpless. In time critical rescues, the lifeguard in the passenger seat goes first. Yeah, she's putting her hand up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. boy's hand's gone up. The Jethro is only just returning to full duties after a dislocated shoulder. Since returning to work from my shoulder, it was the first time I've been in the buggy going flat stick, going, going to a rescue where you know that it's life or death. Both hands up. Tap 
I just cleared that area out before I came off about 10 minutes ago. Go, go, go. There was a thought in the back of my head that, like, this is the first time you're going to paddle real hard. Go, go, go. The fate of these two girls weighs on Jethro's shoulders. I could see that they were youngish girls and the fear was in their eyes. They're both, like, crying, eh? They're little. They should have... I don't know where their mum or someone is. They were screaming for help when I was paddling out, so I, you just got to go. You got to go hard. They're little. They should have... I don't know where their mum or someone is. When you're rescuing young kids, time's on your side. They might not make it in. You really don't know how long, how long they got left in them to fight. Jethro learns why the girls couldn't hear earlier warnings from lifeguards. Because they're deaf. They looked at each other in a weird way as if, like, to acknowledge what was going on, and they worked together as a team and... Yeah, never seen anything like it. young girls are sisters. On shore, Harrison looks for their parents. If I could hear the screams 50 metres away on the beach, surely the parents could hear the screams. Is that the mum on the shore in the black shirt? The grandmother, she's dead. The grandmother has been trying to signal the girls for the last 10 minutes. She was on the water's edge helpless. She couldn't let anyone know that her kids are in trouble. She couldn't run up to us, you know. She just started doing sign language to me and I felt my heart sunk a bit, actually. Back and yeah. Um, me and Samantha thought it's gonna be fun way back, but we were drowned because water splashed over my face. I told Samantha why you say help. When you're out in the water, you hear, you know, the seagulls, the crashing of the waves, they couldn't hear anything. Not being able to hear anything or knowing that the lifeguard's coming to get you, that's, that'd be your worst nightmare. I learned from school about rip, and I thought it might be rip, so I do below what teachers taught us, so it helped, yeah. Jethro's first serious rescue since returning to full duties is a resounding success. Down here we see people from so many different walks of life, and it definitely makes you reflect and, and realise how good our job is down here at the beach. Thank you. When you rescue two girls like that, yeah, it feels really good to send them home. There's one back here. Yes. On the other side of the flag. Someone's just drowned. Run! Run, man! Yeah, we need a mask. Face mark, blue, mark. no pulse. Okay, He's clinically go. dead. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. One, two, three, four, four. Yeah, I think you're going to need a D2, A swimmer has drowned at Bondi. Face blue, no pulse. 
he is clinically dead. I'm just going to keep going until you get this ready. Just keep going. Okay. To restart his heart, lifeguards may need a defibrillator. As well. Can they be called? Can they be called? Let's get the defib. No, give... Maybe we need someone to come up and get a defib. The defib is in the tower, but Dunno can't leave the control post unmanned. The defib is vital. Dunstan has no choice but to enlist a passing backpacker. Oi, guys, why can you do me a massive favour, man? Green shorts. Oi, man, you need to run this down. Oi, 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 buddy. Do us a massive favour, man. You need to run that down yes. to the other side of the flag. See that flag, the flag down there? Someone's just drowned. Get down there. Ali, go, go, go. I promise, Ali, go, go. I promise, I promise. Get down there, man. Run, run. Oi, run. Run, man. We need to get him up in the dry sand. I mean, the third round now. Where's that deep in? We need He's now been clinically dead for three minutes. 21, 22. Someone give Chabba a break. Yeah, I'll come in, I'll come in. All right, dude. Wait, wait, wait. Come on, Eric. 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 Come on, it's now four minutes since the man was first discovered. No one knows how long he was under the water before then. It's critical that no one touches the man's body while it is shocked. I know you can't touch him. Don't touch him. Don't touch him. Don't touch him. You'll get electrocuted. Someone to go breathing. If needed. Begin CPR. Okay, pulse, got a pulse? pulse. I've got a pulse. I have a pulse. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's breathe with him. Breathe with him. I've got a pulse, I've got a pulse. Breathe him up. I've got a pulse. We're going to breathe him up. We've got a pulse. He's all right, mate. We got him. We got him, mate. Keep breathing him up. I've got a good pulse, Chapo. It's all right. Continue. His name is Ryan Kim, 26, a student from Korea. That's it, he's got a lot of fluid coming out, That's what we want to do. That's good. Let's keep it. Yeah, it's alright. Let's just keep backing him up. He's got a good, good, yeah. Okay, there's, good. there's a lot of fluid let's, coming let's out. That's good. Try backpacking. Let's see if we can get out a little bit more. But lifeguards work doesn't let up. Swimmers are now in trouble at South Bondi. We need someone down there. Essential to one of the boys doing the recess. Then, only minutes after being brought back to life. You're right, mate. Hey, 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 It's all right, mate. It's okay, buddy. You're okay, mate. Yeah. 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 Ryan still needs urgent medical care. Good. We've done a good job. Done place. Close friend Dan is by his side. Yeah. 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 You're all right, mate. You're all right. Yeah. 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 How long till we came to? Probably about maybe four sets of CPR. Four rounds, five maybe. So there was CPR. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Precaution still needs to be taken in case of other injuries. Grabbing this spinal board so I can carry him off. 
Good work, Dan. With water in his lungs, Ryan is still at risk of cardiac arrest and secondary drowning. One of the first to reach Ryan was former lifeguard Matt Cahoon. Yeah, I was just out body surfing and a whole lot of kids had the yeah, they're doing the right thing. I sent Matt over on the board, he's whacked a breath into him. Maxie on the jet ski came across. I jumped on the back of the jet ski, he was gone, he was vomiting up, his eyes were rolling. Someone handed him his arm, pulled him up by myself, dragged him up and um, one of the swimmers out there was the next lifeguard and I said, mate, get on and like, you know, start, start compressing. Took him straight in. To be honest, I thought he was um, gone. He came to the beach. The lifeguards put a automated pivot over on him. They didn't shock him. As we're coming in, he's complaining of neck pain. Dan is eager for news. Um, he was very, very badly hurt in the in the water. His lungs were full of water. So we have had to put a tube down his throat, and a machine is ventilating him. In his stomach as well, a lot of water. About We had about half a litre of water in there. Yeah. You want to see him? Yeah. He's very lucky. Very lucky to be alive. CPR started straight away, and that's what was needed. Instant, early, effective CPR. And the guy at the beach have saved his life. A week after Ryan Kim was brought back to life, first aid expert Jamie Twy holds a debrief session. It's the first time I've seen this, so let's let's have a look. Oi! Bring him up, boys! Get him out of the water! 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 That guy is so blue. Obviously, no no spinal precautions taken here, but listen, your priority, the guy's blue, he's not breathing, he's, he's a drowning victim, you need to get him out the beach and start working on it. There's a lot of water coming out of him now. At this stage, I would have rolled him and, and tried to get some water out of him. OK? Yeah, so here, right, we stop here, we stop here. He's starting to breathe. He's starting to breathe. He's starting to respond to that CPR. As they fine-tune their skills, Hoppo arrives with a dead man walking. Hey, you serious? Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, you look a little bit different. Do you want to watch this from the start? Yes? Yeah? OK. All right. Here you are. Hey, get him out of the water. Get him out of the water. Get him out of the water. Get him? And then we'll start compressions up here. Get him out of the water. 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 Do you remember what happened? Uh, I swim in the sea. Yeah, yeah. Then big waves cover me. My body is turned over in the sea. Yeah. So yeah. I drank too much, too much water. sea. Salt water. Yeah, yeah. yeah, salty water. I can swim, so I tried, I tried that. But and another, another wife, yeah. maybe on three times, yeah. I, I give, it, give, give up. I fall in water. Oh, above yeah. your head, yeah? yeah. Everything is so comfortable, and and then I think, oh, it's die, it's it's die. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm very scared, I'm and then scared. my memory is slowly, slowly shut down. Yeah. First, I wake 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 him up. Yes. Uh, I hold crap. Oh, really? Yeah. You remember? Yeah. So very much. 여러분들 여러분들 이제 도움을 잊지 않고. I want to live. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's good to see you smile. Thank you very much. It's pretty special to, to meet the guy and just to see him walking around is good. It's, uh, it's a good feeling. I, it's just wine oh, <laughs> for you. Oh, we love wine. Thank you very much. You know, the fact that you brought something about the life and I was about to contribute to that, you know, I feel really good. He's in his mid-twenties. A life expensive of another 60 years, you know, so... And he sees another beautiful day. If someone's drowning, they don't care who you are, 
they're going to see you're afloat and they're going to jump onto you and start drowning you. Going out for a rescue, you're, you're entering the unknown. You don't know what you're going to come up with for a patient. It's, it's a bit of a lottery. Looking at the conditions, I thought we'll just, be, we'll just be directing a few swimmers up between the flags. I had no idea what was coming for me next. Just metres from shore, two people are drowning. Okay, friend. The man bounces off the bottom between mouthfuls of air as the woman tries to stay afloat. But their rescuers also have a problem. Do you want anything? What? None on me. Where the two people are drowning, we've got no rescue boards. Armed with only a rescue tube, Harrison is seriously undergunned. One of the main rules I got taught when I first started is never go by yourself because if someone's drowning, they don't care who you are, they're going to see you're afloat and they're going to jump onto you and start drowning you. I was just grabbing them and they were sinking me and so I was pretty much trying to keep them afloat and the only time I could get air is if I went down and I pushed myself off the bottom to get some more air then I <laughs> went back under again, I, I was drowning. As Harrison is held under, Yatesy arrives with a much needed rescue board. When I got there, it was worse than I thought. I didn't realise how bad things were. Harrison was pretty much going under. The only thing that's going through my mind at the stage is I'm drowning here. This is this must be what drowning feels like. Hold on, mate, hold on. It doesn't take much for someone to panic and and go under. And this can happen literally five metres from shore. That was a perfect scenario, really. They were swimming and then they got tired. I was trying to jump off the bottom to keep them afloat. They were drowning the tube. Tessuan and his sister Yuzuma are on holiday from South Korea. Outside the flags, the two weak swimmers were caught unaware by a small rip and almost drowned just five metres from shore. It's a big wave, it's a really big wave, so it can be come here. After everyone's relief and on the board, I look back and I'm like, man, we're just right here, you know? <laughs>